Good afternoon and welcome to APEX Instant Tips, episode 91, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton and we have with us today our special guest, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, great to be here, Anton, and uh, excited about today's episode. Um, uh, last week, we covered something that um, only pertains to a subset of Apex developers, but today, I, I think it's a pretty general tip that I think will have value for everybody. Oh, great. Um, well, I know we've talked a little bit about this tip. It is something that um, we both uh, we, we both run back around to these sort of quality and, and software quality issues, and this is, is definitely one of those. Um, what do you have for us? Uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and share my screen? So today's tip is not about PL circle warnings or PL scope. However, it, it implicates both of them and maybe we'll cover those separately or refer them to um, for your tips or something like that. But uh, I am a big fan of PL circle warnings and PL scope um, in my database. Yeah, and we've, co we've file... covered both of those. We've covered both of those in the past about turn on PL circle warnings so you get them and, and that kind of thing. Oh, right. And in, in, in SQL Developer, when I compile a package, I get this feedback here um, that is a, a, a it's a little small. It essentially points out that this um, uh, this function doesn't return a value uh, in the exceptions clause. Um, so it, it's a warning that is a valid criticism of my code that it, that I wouldn't get if I didn't have my PL circle warnings enabled. It would be it would compile, but it wouldn't warn you. Oh, interesting. OK, Precisely. In SQL Developer, I'm able to automatically apply that session value of enabling um, PL circle warnings through the use of um, a startup script. So the path is you go to preferences, you look up database, and here there's a, you can link to a file that is your startup script, and my startup script looks like this. So I am setting uh, PL circle warnings to enable all. I'm setting my PL scope settings to uh, compile again. We're not going to discuss what these things are. And then I'm also setting my date format. Yeah, I have almost the same thing. So, but now we get to the problem that needs to be solved. Uh, many developers don't have a startup script and don't uh, have the benefit of this kind of feedback. And many developers, in fact, choose to code in the browser. Um, uh, I, I'm compiling a package here in my workshop that does have, um, that would have, um, uh, warnings uh, that that are uh, pertinent, but I'm unable to apply them. I, I do this all the time because I, I many places I have to VPN in if I want to go through the database, but I don't if I and so if I only have a few minutes, I, I do this all the time. I don't like it, but I do. So certainly, from the perspective of the browser, I thought that maybe I could come in here and um, uh, just run this. Sorry just run this mm -hmm. um and it, it, it's uh well you have to do one at a time that's the issue just do right, right yeah, yeah i'll just run this i thought that doing this would would, would do the trick of um of enabling uh PL circle warnings but it doesn't seem to work right and that's because the way apex works it's it's stateless you don't get the same database session every time so you're uh, altering a database session when you do this and when you, so you alter this database session and. But then I, when I navigate to the object, the object browser, browser you, I'm you could be getting a different, different session. session. And, and I think, I think Apex actually and ORDS actually reset all those things between every page view. So it's not happening. So with, with two minutes on the clock, what's the solution? Ah, well, I, I know you I, know the answer. What, what do we have? I'm going to propose a, um, a logon trigger and we're going to link to this just in the notes. Um, and I don't know if you can read this very well, but essentially a, a, you need to have a, a run this from a privilege account, maybe a sys account, for example. Um, and essentially means that every time you authenticate yourself to the database, uh, you can have this, these values automatically apply. And so now I have run this from my admin account in my autonomous database. And now when I save and compile here, I get the feedback that is so valuable. So, uh, sidebar, um, developers will have to get used to the fact that it looks like I haven't compiled. It actually has compiled because these are warnings, not errors. Yeah, the PLW. So essentially, you have to train yourself. If it says PLW, it has compiled. It's just not happy about it. Right. And, and I got to say, I kind of like that because it, it, it sticks out, right? Like, hey, you should fix these. And it, it, 
I strive to have no warnings in my code. I'm not saying I always get there, but I strive to have no warnings. Any guess what my favorite yeah. warning is? Uh, is it, um, uh, so uh, pill circle warnings will warn you if you have um, uh, win others than no, as an exception. That is that is my favorite one. Um, so Hayden, yeah. I'm gonna do it really quick. We've got 27 seconds less. Why didn't you just alter system and set this at the system level? It's a good idea, and I haven't tested that, to, to be clear. Um, I would worry about my inability to exclude certain schemas. So I don't think we want um, everything in Sys, or Apex for that matter, compiled into PLScope. And also, for that matter, when you're installing um, Apex, maybe you don't want a flood of PLSQL warnings when you're installing it. So I, I think only running it for those schemas where you're in active development would be ideal. Right. And I'll just say um, that means you could, instead of doing not in and these kinds of things, you could actually specify the schemas you're interested in. You would need to do your org public user, um, your Apex public user, those kinds of things, because those are the users when you're in the browser that actually matter. It's not, you, you couldn't do it, for example, I think you were using an ILA schema schema there. Um, whatever your schema was, you couldn't just do it for that. You could do it. Um, uh, um, well, so Rich is saying you should whitelist instead yeah, of black. So, so, right? yeah, this, yeah. this is exactly what I'm. Yeah, this is what we're talking about here. Is right. um, yeah. Um, so right, you could you could certainly do that, but you would need to make sure that you got those those schemas that that Ords logs in as to to do that. So I, I think this is a Absolutely. great one. Um, I think I think I'm going to actually start doing it in the environments that I'm working in because a I want. I want the feedback myself and B, I want the people I'm working with to get the feedback, even if they don't set it up themselves. Um, so, oh, great. I'm glad we got a, uh, we got a taker on it. That's, that's always a good, a good sign. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, because it's a tip that requires a privilege account, it, it's not something that is so easily applied, you do need to coordinate with your DBA and you're, you're going to impact every user in your database. So it's, um, it's perhaps the, a small challenge to get this implemented, but I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, or as Rich said, you can, you can whitelist it and, and only do it for, for the, the browser-based ones and, and the schemas that you're actually developing in, right? Um, yeah, uh, And the, the gist has the two specific grants that you need. So it doesn't have to be a super privileged account. It just needs grant, I think create trigger and manage administer database trigger, I think are the two, but it's in the gist. So we'll get that in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we did this tip in five minutes and then I kept rambling. Um, <laughs> I, I think we got it in. Uh, right. I'm proud of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you can create your own log on trigger. Yeah, but it, that doesn't really do, that doesn't really do it for you because you, well, I suppose you could do a log on trigger just for the ORDS public user account and so forth. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Rich, you've got a good point. You could do, instead of the database logon trigger, um, but I don't, I don't even know if you can do your own logon trigger. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, but if you could, you would need to make sure you did it for the ORDS public user. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Rich, it's a homework assignment for Rich. Come back and tell us if uh, if that's possible. I'm not I'm not familiar with how to how to make that happen. Um, but if there is a way, um, Rich can Rich can come on Rich can come on the show and and tell us uh, his his improved method. Uh, so yeah, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it works for me. Yeah, no, but um, if it is possible, I, I'm eager to hear it because yeah. that that would simplify some things, perhaps. All right. Well, I don't have anything else um, noteworthy or interesting for today's episode. Do you? No, <laughs> I think we should give people back their Fridays. All right. All right. It's a beautiful afternoon here. I hope it is wherever you are. Like, subscribe, give your mom a call. Bye. Have a good Friday.